This guide explains how to design and animate an Agretzko style character. I'll be focusing on the Netflix style rather than the original TV shorts. This is water. This tutorial is not specific to any one animation program, though for animating in the same style as the show, you're going to want to be able to use puppets. I'll be doing that with Adobe software. None of the characters are templates. Each has its own unique style of eye, mouth, head, and body. This can make designing a bit challenging because all of those choices are left to you. It helps to make some doodles of your real life animal to see what key shapes and patterns you should aim for. I'm gonna create a cobra. Experiment to see what best captures your animal's personality in the most simple way possible. The head should be one big closed shape. It looks like my cobra is gonna be a character with a mouth that wiggles when she talks instead of opening and closing. But if you end up with something like this and you want an articulate mouth, then move it further into the head like the first sketch or create a bottom hinged jaw. The real question is, do you give a snake arms and legs or not? Hands are claws, fingers, or feathers. Hooves are optional. If you choose to use hooves, then treat them as regular hands with fingers when needed. Agretzko animals have tails, but short tails are usually hidden. When you're satisfied with the black outline sketch, figure out colors and body markings. These should be similar to what your animal would have in real life. Of course, you'll probably want to break the color and pattern rules if you're adapting an existing character design to the Agretzko style. Height check your sketch against a show character. And now it's obvious the cobra's head is way too small. Adjust. Create the puppet pieces. Black outline with no pressure sensitivity and rounded ends, including eyelashes. The only time you will use tapered lines is for special facial expressions. Do not miter points. Everything is round. Also something subtle, but outlines are not all the same thickness. There are more than two thicknesses, but for the most part, you'll have a regular line and a thinner line. The head and the main body have the thick line and other parts are thinner though this can change depending on how close up a shot is. For example, on close-ups, the mouth has an especially thin line. Inner fur markings have no outline. An exception would be Gori, whose face is surrounded by a gray line. Washimi's feathers are another colored line exception. Lower jaws on cats, if they have one. The only reason you might make an exception like one of these is appeal and clarity. Usually lineless details stay inside the black outline, but on front and three-quarter views, if details move and happen to push outside the black outline, they overlap it. This makes tweening the puppet way easier. So your character should mostly be set by now. Let's take a break from that and talk about backgrounds. Backgrounds have colored outlines and sometimes an inner line to define surface as an item, but sometimes it's just a darker shade. Gradient fills are common. Stuff way in the back has no outline at all, and is usually out of focus, so blur it up. The entire background is often blurry on close-ups. Another common thing is a filter on top of the background for light sources, with a less harsh version of the filter over the characters. Now back to the character. Rig up your puppet. I'm beginning to realize Adobe might not have been the best choice because it struggles with consistent line thicknesses once you start tweening things. If that happens to you and it's a problem, convert lines to fills. Test your rig and make adjustments. For the animation, everything in a Gretzko is actually relatively minimal. Even blinking is rare. Movement is simple tweens with careful shot planning so the animators don't often have to move a character from one place to another without a camera cut, or a simple walk cycle, or having the shot from the waist up, <laughs> so you don't have to deal with the legs. In fact, when on-camera movement does happen, often the character will disappear and reappear in the new spot with no in-betweens, or maybe one in-between, or a smear frame, if it's a really fast comic movement. So what you should focus on is using the animation and facial expressions to enhance comedy or drama. That's the whole point of a Gretzko, is relatable comedic drama. 
And the animation really plays into that with extreme faces and snappy movements. Most everything else is small movements in place and a lot of cutting back and forth between close-ups. Parts of characters' faces move independently of their skulls a lot, so you're going to want all of those on separate layers. To animate the shiver you see on eyes, draw the white, then draw the black scratches below it. Note there is a top black scratch layer that overlaps the eye white a bit. Copy that frame and smooth out the lines. The Agretzko eye shiver is not a redraw, it's a smoothed version of the first drawing. Let those true drawings loop on ones. The other type of eye shiver, like you see on Haida, is also a two-frame loop, but instead of smoothing, the bottom of the eye and any bags are dragged down one or two pixels. Add finishing touches and camera movements, and you'll be done! Well, other than those basic guidelines, you'll get to experiment with the animation style yourself. Have fun with the expressions, stick to basic shapes, and take care not to over-animate the characters, and you'll be making stuff in no time. I guess all that's left to do is ask you which 2D art style you want to learn next. Leave your request below and subscribe for future tutorials. You can find my existing tutorials in the playlist linked below, and all kinds of tips about animation in the Scribble Kibble series. Hope to see you soon!